Have you ever stopped to think what might happen if you grab two coconuts and you smash them together? Well, if you do it long enough, you're, they're going to break. And what are you going to get left inside? A little bit of mush, but not much of anything else. But now, if you took those coconuts and you substituted them for avocados and you smashed them together, what would happen then? Well, it turns out there's going to be a variety of different outcomes, but a few things will remain consistent. The skin's going to peel away. The fruity part is going to kind of mush in all different directions. But, and this is the key, the hard pits of the avocados are going to remain intact. Now, I get it. This might be like something a first grader would present at show and tell. But we all know children are the best teachers. And the lesson here becomes clear. If you imagine with me for a moment, the coconuts and the avocados represent human beings. But more specifically, allow them to represent the human identity. And so what would happen now if two people who were like coconuts came together and tried to cooperate or work on something? And on the other hand, what if those people were like avocados? I'm going to tell you a story today about how you're going to want to be more like an avocado and less like the coconut. Because the sad reality is so many of us are like coconuts. We have these hard external shells tempered by the pressures of life. We connect ourselves so deeply to our jobs, our projects, our relationships. And folks, this is a dangerous place to live because at any moment, we can be delivered that critical blow that breaks us, revealing that which is left of a smashed coconut, a shattered shell of ourselves. And that's exactly what happened to me. Eight years ago, standing on the cold, dark, damp platform of a New York City subway station, the third train had gone whizzing by and spooked me back into awareness, one I was trying so desperately to avoid. The pain was crushing. I had given everything to a relationship that had come to a crashing halt. And that, coupled with financial hardship and a job loss, well, that delivered the blow that broke me. And so how many of you out there, either at this moment or in the past, have experienced something similar? One in which a relationship devastated you that ended. One in which a comment about your work sent you into a month-long tailspin that you couldn't recover from. Or are you the type of person that maybe sees someone else's success only to unearth feelings of jealousy, inadequacy, and negativity? Or maybe you're someone who asks for feedback because it's the thing to do, but being crushed when you're delivered the reality. Now, these are all signs that you might be like I was. You might be like the coconut. And you might be sitting there right now, one break away from completely cracking. But it doesn't have to be that way. In fact, I'm here today to encourage you to be more like the avocado with a hard center and soft adaptive edges. And what's really cool is as a health and fitness professional, I get to train the human body. And nature has gifted us with this miraculous body, showing us that the way to maintain strength and health is by having a hard center, allowing our arms, our legs to adapt to environmental differences. And I found this to be the way to reduce the risk for injury, increase longevity and resilience, and boost performance. And so then I got to thinking, what if nature is trying to tell us something here? What if the same principles that we can use to strengthen our physical bodies can be applied to strengthening our minds, our mental cores, our identities? And it's really fantastic. The parallels are almost too good. If we create a strong sense of who we are, well, that allows us to have adaptive emotional states and responses to what's going on in the world. Which now, of course, raises the question, how strong is your core, your identity? Now, in order to answer that, I'm going to ask you guys two questions, and I want you to answer them inside truthfully. Who are you at your best? And who are you at 
your worst. And you see, if the answer to these questions comes out to be the same, well, I got some bad news. You might be like the coconut. Because you see, the coconut creates a hard external shell. It doesn't adapt to the world. These are different situations calling for different responses. Meaning that you might be doing the right thing for the world, but not be right inside yourself. Tiptoe on the edge, trying not to trip and break. Knowing inside that you might be a little bit of mush. You might be empty. So if we identified this as a risk factor for precursor to injury, well, in the world of fitness, we would strength train you. But as I teach at Gray Institute, we don't want to strength train the same way every day. In fact, we want to create variability. Turns out variability is an indicator of natural health. To understand this a little bit more, think of the pinnacle of human performance. Think about our athletes. What's one thing that connects all of our athletes? Well, when they move, it's flawless. It's beautiful. It's precise. It's calculated. But it is adaptive. Athletes can harness the amazing power of momentum, and they can transform it, bending their bodies around, maintaining a strong physical center, and allowing their limbs to adapt. And this is a sign of being healthy. So if that's how we can train our physical bodies for resilience, then in order to train our identities, we need to have some foundational theory on which we can train. And Barbara Fredrickson, out of the University of North Carolina, came up with this fantastic theory. She called it broaden and build. And it goes a little something like this. We can use positive emotions to broaden the action responses or emotional responses we have in the world and build mental resources so that way when times get tough, we are prepared and we are resilient. Want to see how it works? Think for a moment of a time in your life where you experienced joy. Do you remember how you felt? Think again of another time in your life where you experienced joy. And how did you feel? And what did you do? And more importantly, what did you feel like doing? Because what's fascinating about how positive emotions work is they broaden and they present themselves in many different ways. And a study by Fredrickson confirmed just that. What she did was grabbed a group of participants, split them up into two different sides, put one side into a negative emotional state, took the other side, put them into a positive emotional state, and she asked them this question. While you're in this state right now, what do you feel like doing, going out and doing in the world? The findings are fascinating. The group that was put into a positive emotional state wrote down twice as many things that they felt like going out and doing versus the side that was in the negative emotional state. And you all can see this in your everyday life. Think about the first day of going to college versus the first exam that you failed. Think about the first job that you got that you really wanted versus being yelled at by a boss. Think about going to that far off destination you've been yearning to go to versus having your trip canceled the day before. We can see pretty clearly right now that all of those positive events that you experienced presented in different ways. Maybe some of the events you smiled. Maybe some of the events you jumped for joy. Maybe you sat and savored. Maybe you shared it with a friend. Many different expressions. But on the negative side of things, getting yelled at, not going to your vacation, well, you kind of hunkered down. You can think of negative emotions like an injury to the body. If I had a shoulder injury, do you think I'm coming at you? Hey, Jason, I got this shoulder injury thing over here. You want to fix me up? Probably not. In fact, we're most likely going to hunker down. We're going to reduce the things that we want to do. And this is a good thing, because negative emotions like injuries are protective. They keep us safe when times are tough. The problem is, when we live in that state constantly, when we live in a state of panic or fear or sadness or anger or depression, our edges become harder because we can't adapt and we can't move. So now that we know how the theory works, I'm going to give you guys two very simple things that you can use today to begin to broaden yourself and build from the inside out, being more like the avocado with that hardcore and those soft adaptive edges. And the first thing is we want to change your words. My wife. I love her. 
But every morning she wakes up, she tells me how awesome her coffee is. And I said, okay, hon, I get it. It's awesome. She uses the word like it's going out of style. And so I asked her, I said, is this coffee truly awesome? Because if coffee and everything is awesome, thanks Lego Movie, then we end up with nothing really being awesome. So I asked her, I said, hey, can you change your words? How else can you describe the coffee? And she started saying, okay, okay, you're doing the psychology thing. I get it, I get it. So she started using words like bold and tasty and satisfying. And what we found out when we were pregnant and we got to use the word, wow, this is truly awesome. Well, guess what? It felt different. There's 175,000 words in the English language. You know how many we use on a daily basis? 3,000. Less than 2% of all available words are being used constantly. Could you imagine what would happen if we broaden our capacity to experience reality? If we used words that were more appropriately tailored to understanding the situation, broadening our ability to interact with the world, knowing that variability is a, self, is a healthy indicator. And the second thing I'm gonna encourage everyone to do is spend a little bit of time with yourself but not here today, do it in the future. There's a really cool concept used by Dr. Marty Seligman out of the University of Pennsylvania called Future Self Continuity. And he did a really neat study where he took a group of participants and he asked them, how clear are you today on where you wanna be five weeks down the road? And as he was asking them to kind of rate their comfort with that stat, he then also asked them to measure their happiness, their satisfaction, their well-being, and their motivation. Guess what he found? That those participants that were more likely to have a clear version of themselves down the road had higher levels of happiness, life satisfaction, and of course motivation. And when he followed up with them five weeks down the road, well, they were more likely to achieve their goals. So yes, I'm telling you, you can daydream. You can manifest, but I'm encouraging you to do it through the lens of positivity, using the language to create that future version of yourself. We need to learn from nature, knowing that the tree that bends in the wind will not break. Flexibility and adaptability are signs of being healthy. Could you imagine if more humans were willing to be flexible in negotiations, in cooperations, on matters of things like climate change, equality, morality, economics? Could you imagine if people less like the coconut, getting together, butting heads, breaking, completely shattering, not being left with much of anything, were more like the avocado? They get together, sure, things can get messy, but guess what? Because the cores are strong, they can always go back, plant into the ground, regrow, come back, try again because they can adapt, and who they are inside remains intact. Eight years ago, I was like the coconut. I looked inside, and I didn't like the answer to the question, who am I at my best, and who am I at my worst? So just the same way that we can decide to strengthen our physical bodies if we're at risk for injury, so too can we decide to strengthen our mental bodies, our cores, our identities. And what's really neat is as a mindset guy today, I have the privilege of doing that with clients I work with. I got this one guy, teaches martial arts to kids in New York City. He comes to our sessions slightly perturbed or unhinged by something that the kids are doing. He's a little cocoa nutty. And we found that it puts cracks in his shell every time. So what did we do? Well, we started working on changing the words that he used to describe his situation, but we also took him into the future and said, could you imagine what this would do if you worked positively with these children? And what we found is that, yes, he still tells me about all the crap the kids are doing, but he follows it up by how he's helping them grow, how he's helping them change, how he's helping them evolve. And what's really cool is that we train not for today, but we train for tomorrow. And there is a study that suggests we can extend that tomorrow. 
out of the University of Kentucky, 180 participants were collected over 70 years. They were giving data to scientists and researchers. They were giving them their personal memoirs, autobiographies about them, and their medical records. So when those participants passed, researchers codified and looked at everything. And guess what they found? That those participants that engaged in more positivity by denoted by the words that they used in their writings, the events that they engaged in, lived on average 10 years longer. 10 years longer, just by focusing on what's possible, looking through the lens of positivity. And we know that tomorrow might take some time to get there. It's not easy to harden your core. So allow me to leave you like this, to quote the great Ted Lasso when asked, if he believed in ghosts, responded, well, I do. But more importantly, I think that they need to believe in themselves. <laughs> Friends, it doesn't matter what I say up here today. If you don't believe that the change is possible inside yourself, you're never gonna get there. We don't get good at doing push-ups by watching someone else do them, though that's kind of entertaining. We have to go out there and do them for ourselves. We have to intentionally focus our attention to be more like the avocado with the hardcore and soft adaptive edges. Using the theory of broaden and build as our guiding light, we have to be mindful about changing the words that we use so we can use those words to create a better future version of ourselves. Because I believe that each and every one of you out there possesses the seed of possibility. And it's my encouragement to you to take that seed Plant it into the soil of positivity so you can work towards harnessing the awesome, used properly, fruits of your labor to store away so that when times do in fact get tough in this world, as we sure know they will, you can remember to be more like the avocado by hardening your core and creating soft adaptive edges. Thank you. <laughs>